and we're recording. Quiet on the set! <laughs> <laughs> Until we become a real big time fancy flashy network, we have to scream quiet on the set ourselves for my own squeaky voice, okay? Because I've been told that my voice is squeaky. So we have two, um, different, we have two different sets. So I gotta, I gotta tell my people to shut the hell up! <laughs> right, where's your dog? The poor dog is like, what the hell? Okay, guys, we, 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 we just, about professionalism. All about professionalism. It's just, it's just all about, you know, trying to enjoy, because we were like, okay, they don't see what goes on behind the scenes, so we decided to let y'all in on a little bit. Hope you don't mind the ridiculousness, but hey, you gotta, you gotta come on now. You gotta have fun with this stuff. Okay, let me do the actual intro. <laughs> let me do the actual intro. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, and this is our new show, it's called, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to Savannah, it's called, no, I was turning it over to you, no filter. <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. Oh, you can't hear me? Uh, no, I hear you, I said I'm not going to say anything. Oh, oh, okay, okay, so, yeah, this I is. <laughs> okay, so the dream, the dream, you know, you got to dream. If you're going to dream, you're going to dream big. Okay, the big dream is to have a network of a bunch of different shows to bring you all of these um, tools and, um, and educational, you know, resources. So, which brings us back to this new show. It's called No Filter. So, welcome. This is our official, um, you know, first week, you know, announcing it and, and, and publishing. And what is it for? It is learning, doing our civic duty to learn government. So every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to be here dropping truth bombs, major truth bombs, okay? And we're also going to be featuring the jerk of the day, which we also call the dick of the day. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. I can't say that. But the point is, there are people who have nothing better to do with their time than to troll other people who are interested in learning and sharing what they know about the government. So if you find a comment that is particularly interesting, we invite you to drop it down in the comments down below. Drop any comments, but remove their names. You can use first names, just first name only, and drop the comment in the comment box below, you know, below this video, and we will use it and potentially feature that call out as the next dick of the day in the next episode. How about that? How about that for audience participation? <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much fun. You know what? We just, we, we talk all the time about how many times we see posts that are like, what the hell? Is this person supposed to be in this group? So it kind of, you know, yeah. you, you see these people that are total opposite of rights, humanity, where did you come from? So. You know, they're just there to antagonize and, and, and criticize and put down and just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I, can't, I don't get why would you spend time, if you, if you don't like what is being said, leave the damn truth. Just leave. <laughs> That's all you have to do. You mean you, you took time to say that? Okay, well, since you took time, well, we're going to make you famous. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna analyze it. We're gonna take time. We're gonna take time to analyze what you said, what you wrote. So that's what that's what's yeah. going on. And another little tidbit of truth: there are research projects and programs that pay all different types of government agencies to infiltrate oh. Facebook group books. And they what they do is they kind of go in and cause controversy just yeah. so that we can see how you react. Yeah. And when they see how you react, they take notes down and then they can, you know, give this profile of how this particular face group community behaves. So that's why these a lot of these people are saying outlandish things is because it's probably a CPS agent trying to figure out, you know, can I get a bunch of people who are fighting this to agree with me? And then you dumbasses do. That's the best part. That's the best right. part. Right. They know how to infiltrate to divide, and then they get what they want. So it takes all the attention away from the mission and the vision of the group in the first place. And now you're now you're in here fighting and 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 chest thumping and ego tripping and all of that. 
leave all that aside. We don't need any of that in the group. So if you find it on your journey, on Facebook or any other social media, send us a screenshot or drop it down below in comments. But when you do drop it below in the comments, remove the, the instigator's uh, last name, just first names only, so we don't get sued or banned off of these channels. Okay? That's it. So moving right along, today's uh, topic, I mean, that was pretty much like a topic in and, yeah. <laughs> in and of itself. I mean, we could have just went on and on with that, but that's not the topic. That's just a feature of the show. The real topic is broken windows. Guys, you are, okay, we're about to just drop the truth right here on what's going on with these cops, okay? All right. So in a previous video, you learned that the police officers have a way of searching your information and in what I believe to be unlawful search and seizures, and you never knew about it, so you never had an opportunity to fight it. You never had an opportunity to go up against it. But the question is, why? Why are they obtaining this kind of information? What do they do with it? Who wants them to, to take this information and why? I mean, just there's so many things behind it that we're just going to break it down piece by piece. And we're going to begin with the theory that kind of started a lot of it, not all of it per se, but it did actually get things in their beginning phases. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and I'm going to read the article in regards to the broken theory doctrine. So if I can figure out how to share my screen. Now, broken window theory. Hold on a second. I can't uh, do a share. Ah. Uh. Technical difficulties, bear with me for one moment. Okay, hi. There we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> <There's my girl. laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I see her. Okay. Okay, so now we're seeing my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Open window theory, okay. Now, this kind of did show you getting to this uh, screen for some reason. <laughs> All right, no, it, it's, it's a little tricky. I'll get it eventually. But this is yeah. just, you know, an overview of, for, for you to understand as we go about learning government, really, who are the police? What is their job? We've always believed that their job is to protect us and stop crimes. And that's not true. That's not actually what their job is. Um, there are several Supreme Court rulings that tell you that they have no obligation to protect you. But why then? If they're not here to protect us, what do they do? Well, this is going to explain it to you. So tune in, stay, stay alert. And if you want to look it up, you can Google this information easily. So the broken window theory is um, an article by a criminal criminologist named James Q. Wilson back in 1982 and George Kelling. The broken window theory has been implemented in many cities around the world with some success. Broken window theory states that the signs of disorder like graffiti, dirty streets, broken windows induce more disorder. Broken windows theory argued that a broken window left unrepaired will make a building look uncared for or abandoned and soon attract vandals to break all other windows. Many jurisdictions in North America have adopted practices based on this broken window theory perspective. New York crime and drug decline mm -hmm. is one of the best examples of a successful implementation of broken window theory. Mm -hmm. According to broken window theory, as a broken window foster criminal, I'm sorry, as, according to broken window theory, promoting walking in the heat um, can't be According to broken window theory, promoting walking the beat form of policing is the best way to keep things in order because indicators of a neighborhood's disrepair such as a broken window foster criminality. Broken window theory is directed towards a, the prevention of crime and this will be accomplished by steps like keeping buildings in good repair. So we need to think about that. Prevention of crime, not crime stopping. Prevention, aka risk management okay so what this article and you can look this up for yourself like i said but i'm just going to give you a quick rundown what happened how do we come up with this theory so back in the later 70s 
there was a lot of complaints from communities, specifically the black communities, as you all will know by history, that there was an outcry that they didn't get as much police assistance and that the police weren't doing anything to help them and that their neighborhoods were had more crime by nature and so therefore we need more police and the police were not doing anything about these crimes so it caused for an outcry from the community to to, to come in and help us to do something about it so this is what they're talking about when they speak of crime prevention and signs of disorder disorder mm -hmm. conduct right so yeah. now we have an issue where elderly people are becoming heightenedly concerned about the, the, the neighborhood environment because when we get elderly, we tend to have a little bit more paranoia, let's face it. When we start walking down the street to the grocery store and there's a group of teenagers sitting out there and they might be laughing, boisterous, swinging their hands, looking like they're nuts, and then an elderly woman might say, oh my right now." They're dangerous to me, you know, so she might get scared and she might not want to go to the grocery store anymore because she feels that these boys sitting out there is causing her a pain, an injury, an emotional injury. She's being hurt because she's afraid, right? So what does she do? She calls the police to tell them to tell those boys to, to get off that corner. The police come in in the 70s and they're like, lady, we can't help you. That they're not, they're not doing anything wrong. They're not committing any crime. But now she feels ignored. She feels there's no one to help her with this fear, with this problem. So now she and the other elderly people in the neighborhood start to talk and they start to say things like, oh, those police, they're not helping us with these kids. And oh my God, I'm scared and I'm scared too. And then eventually it leads to what we know as the, the what is that, that game that you used to play, the telephone? So all of a sudden it turns into that elderly people are being targeted and are the highest, you know, at risk of being robbed and raped and right. burglarized. So right, they're placed in that high risk group. Right, so now this is a belief amongst the community and if you have a population of elderly and a population of youth, we come to a clash because we're not thinking the same way. We're not of the same culture. Doesn't matter what color your skin is, the fact of the matter is I can't fit in or understand a teenager and they don't fit in or understand me. But when you are even older than that and you feel frail, a little fragile, a little more endangered, this causes for what is disorderly in the neighborhood. Not a crime, not a crime. Nothing, nobody did anything wrong here. Everybody actually is okay. But now we have this group of people who are getting louder and louder and louder saying that you're not helping me. You're failing in your duty as a police officer. You're not doing your job. Elderly people are getting robbed. Well, they did a research program in these neighborhoods where they were having these issues. And come to find out in conclusion of that research that actually elderly people, they really weren't in any danger at all. As a matter of fact, most of the crimes that were committed in those neighborhoods were committed against young men. And they believe that the reason for that was because of the fact that young men were on the streets more frequently and because they were young, a little bit more combative, a little bit more brave than an elderly person would be. So they had an option, they had a choice. They could have went to the elderly community and explained to them that your fears are meritless. These are just kids acting you know, out in his corner, the way kids act. Yeah, they're and, hanging out. They're kids. That's what they do. That's right. what kids do. Yeah, and there's no need for you to be afraid of them. They're not intending to harm you. And we know that because the statistics specifically showed that elderly people were not target of crime. Mm -hmm. But instead of telling people that, they ran with it. They ran with it. It sounded great. Yeah, it works in their favor. So if they were to tell the people that this was a really misplaced fear, then they would have just been able to tell them that we went around the same circles. People would have still called the police without an emergency, without a crime actually committed, and they didn't want to be bothered. 
They didn't want their resources drained by these people who were misplacing their fears and then calling the police. And that's why they created the beat so that cops could walk around. And although the statistics show it changed nothing, it did not change or lower the level of criminality in the neighborhood at all. It didn't reduce the crimes that were happening, but because they were present, the sole purpose, the sole, the sole reason that they're there is to shut the elderly lady up so that she stops making the police look bad. That's why they're there. Just that's their feel reason. good. They were, they're like, you might as well call them back to feel good because that's all they are there to, to do. Not to prevent right. crime or not to actually um, you know, serve and protect, but just to give you that feel good. There's the truth bomb, guys. I can't believe when I found out from Tracy here, I could not believe like this is this is this is this is downright diabolical stuff that I, I just can't understand how they, they keep getting with the stuff. But the reason why they keep getting away with it is because we don't know enough about it, but we're here to change all of that. Okay, we're doing our just, we're, we're, we're not pointing fingers, we're just asking questions, we're just doing our civic duty to learn government, right? That's all we're doing. We're not, we're not you know, casting uh, uh, all kinds of dispersion uh, on them. No, we're just asking questions and we want it to be fixed if it's incorrect. And truth be told, a lot of it is very incorrect. So, um, well, you got to ask, you got to ask, why is it that we don't really understand this theory? Why is it that when police approach, they don't explain to you that they're trying to keep order in the neighborhood by making the neighborhood feel safe specifically from your disorderly conduct. So if a policeman comes up to you and says, show me your ID. Well, there is no law requiring you to show an ID. It, 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 there's like, you know, a, a statute, but the language is tricky. So for the most part, there's no requirement. And again, it's repugnant to the Constitution as far as uh, Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights are concerned. So if yeah. he says show you his ID and then arrest you, what he's really outwardly saying is that you are destroying the civil um, order of things. If I allow for you to use your rights to prevent me from doing what I have to do, you're showing the neighborhood that I'm not protecting them mm -hmm. and it ruins the visual appearance that yeah. I'm supposed to be giving them. Yeah, and the perception is blown. Mm -hmm. Oh so my god. They goodness. don't want that perception of feeling safe to be destroyed by some disorderly jerk like you. And that's why this open window theory is pretty much in everything we do every day. So when you are thinking about how well, you're crazy, right? No way. My policeman is a hero. Really? <laughs> and that's a policeman jumped through your window and saved you in the middle of being raped. Anyone? When has a policeman jumped into the window or threw the kick down the door? right when someone was about to pull the trigger on your head. Never happened. Could happen, maybe once in a blue moon, but that's not what they're there for. If the police officer chooses to do something like that, it's by his own free will and choice. He is not obligated in his duty as a policeman to do that. Nah, and that's the truth bomb, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness broken window theory. Look it up. I beg of you. Google it. Let your fingers do the walking. Don't just take our word for it because I, Lord knows I don't want to be labeled a nut job because I don't want them knocking down my door. <laughs> don't take my word for it. Read the yes. mission. Read the mission on your local police department's website and they tell you what I'm telling you. Yes. Their mission is to promote, preserve, and deliver a feeling of security, safety, and quality services. If you make me feel, if you make me feel safe, are you my hero? Thank you for your service, officer. Thank you for your service, for making me feel a certain kind of way. I could think about people who made me feel a little bit better than that, but <laughs> thank you for your service anyway. 
Yeah, you make me feel hey, so secure. Hey, hey, policeman, right? Yeah, that's not, that's not working for me. <laughs> that's not going to work for me. That's not how that works. I don't feel uh, secure by your presence. I, yeah, and I have to go back to saying the fact that, yeah, there's nothing about what they're doing that makes me feel, that don't make me feel safe. Oh, gosh, God, I get this picture. I'm going to say like, it again. Does this, that make you feel safe? Does not does not it does quite the opposite it's scary what do you mean what do you mean look at this guy right here he he knows medical tactics he made sure she didn't bite <laughs> her tongue while they were applying the uh medical shock yeah. therapy to her so he knew what he was doing you should feel safe come on and what's up with her face facial expression here this the, the one on the right the hell's on going on in her mind she's telling the other one over here to wake up wake up and participate yeah. I don't hear you. I don't see you. Uh, good taking, officer. That's your good officer. Out. He's pretending yeah. to not be there. And the other guy in the back with the baseball cap, too. That's the good guy, too. Right. So there's two good officers who didn't partake in this uh, assault. The, the, uh, the botchery. See, they're good apples. Mm -hmm. Just a couple bad ones. But right. the, those two sitting there doing nothing, those are the good ones right there. Sad. They failed in their appearance to make her feel safe, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she don't feel safe right now. I'm pretty sure. Nah. I know I wouldn't. Nah. But the good news with this, the, on the upside of this, if there's any part of this to, to you know, take away, is that she is suing, and so we could be potentially looking at a millionaire. Guys, you got to take them to task, because if you don't feel safe, then they're not doing their own basic duty. So ask questions. All right, we are over the time <laughs> again because this stuff, <laughs> this stuff just, I mean, it just kind of comes out of us. We don't really, we, we try. We try to hold back, but it just keeps calling us. There's emotion so, uh, attached. She can't help it. You know, just can't help I, it. I know. It's just too much to, hold, to be held in. So, um, but uh, in closing, we'll just go ahead and, and, and give you the schedule one more time. Tuesdays and Thursdays, TNT, get it? Anyway, it's every Thursday. We're just here to help you as we, you know, take this journey, uh, you know, to learn government, you know, because we're, you know, we're trying to, you know, be respectful and, uh, and participatory of, uh, of our civic duty, pretty much, right? I'm just trying to do the right thing here. I'm not, I'm not trying to make any waves. We're just, we're, just, we're just trying to learn. We're just learning. And if you want to learn along with us, please remember to hit that subscribe button. That's literally how we grow. And hit the uh, bell notification so you won't miss an upload. Okay, check the description box because um, we'll go ahead and put the link to those two um, articles that we showed in the video. We'll go ahead and put those links. Just check the description box for important details and follow-up information. Check it, check it, check it. And don't forget to drop comments. Let us know what you think. Would you feel safe if a cop showed up in the neighborhood? And now that you know that he's just there to make you feel safe and not actually provide any services, would you he feel safe? Provide, what do you mean? Hold on. He does provide a service. Oh. You didn't see the service that was being provided. Did you miss that? I, I, I did not miss it, but I, I don't feel like it'll make me feel safe. There's your service. <laughs> not everybody gives shock therapy, you know. Right, right, right. For free at, at that. Yeah, right. I don't think she was built for that. Right, right. Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I will decline those services. And I will venture to say that I will not feel safe with... Is it about quantity or is it about quality? This, <laughs> this is the service that they're offering. Guys, let us know what you think. All right, let's keep the fun going. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about the new series, about, you know, the, the, the real reason, the real services that the uh, police is there, you know, the police presence is, is supposed to serve as making you feel good. And also, don't forget to drop comments, you know, from trolls and hired guns who are there to just, you know, just just keep us divided and, and antagonize us and all of that. So this is the new series. 
you know, like it, love it, or hate it, we're here to stay because we're trying to take you on this journey with us to learn our government. That's our civic duty. That's what we're supposed to do. So that's all we have for you today on this episode. See you on the next episode. And also drop comments or suggestions for new episodes because we could always use, you know, your, uh, your ideas. So just keep it coming. Any final words? Are you good? Yep. All right. Stay safe. Stay safe. See you next time. Subscribe.